All right, what's good guys? It's Roexo from Loopsad and today I kind of will get, get into, um, yeah, just how I sell kits basically, you know, how I've kind of built up my channel, built up my store, you know, all that run through A to Z basically. I'm gonna give like a complete run through of my process on selling kits and how I've been able to kind of make like a comfortable five figures, which I mean, you know, it's not the most money in the world. It's not like some crazy high paying job at the moment, but for music, I mean, I feel like it's a lot compared to some people, especially if you're starting up, you just want to get some tips on, you know, how to succeed on YouTube, how to succeed, you know, on your store, how to make like a, make a bunch of money maybe. So yeah, I'm going to get into it, you know, how to make like good loops as well to some extent. And we're going to go straight from the doll to all the way to like ads and stuff like that. And like sauce in between, like kind of like my philosophy too as well. And you know, this isn't gonna be the only way to succeed, but this is what I've personally done and it's what, what's worked for me. So yeah, you could take a bunch of different routes, a ton of people have, you know, but yeah, this is what I do. So we're gonna get into it now. All right, so first things first, we're in the DAW here. I'm using FL Studio. You may not be, you may be using whatever Ableton, Logic, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I'm on FL. So one thing I gotta say that, you know, it's gonna be tough to kind of, you know, quantify in any way, but you gotta make sure your stuff's good, man. I mean, that's one thing for sure. And obviously you're gonna improve as time goes on, that's inevitable, but you have to be at a point where you can see your loops being on like a record that these artists that you're making them for would hop on. You have to be very critical of yourself. You have to kind of analyze your mixing, your, you know, your patterns. Are they, are they like, are they catchy enough? All that kind of stuff, you know, perfect your craft basically. That's all I'm saying. Because you don't want to put out kits and have them actually do well view wise, but then the loops aren't good, you know, that's a bad first impression and first impressions matter, right? So you don't want to have like a loop kit with 3,000, 4,000 views and the loops are trash because then 3,000, 4,000 people are going to think your loops are trash and they're not going to fuck with you after that. So you kind of got to get to a stage where you feel like, all right, like this is some industry level shit. You feel me? Don't, don't be putting out don't be rushing these loops out for like a bag or something that's all i'm saying because i feel like i kind of did that to some extent like those loop kits aren't really on my channel anymore so i'm not proud of them so yeah that's just something you gotta look out for so and uh another thing is like in kind of relation to that you gotta find a balance between like perfection and like urgency so you never want to compromise on the quality of your loops right so whatever your release schedule is if you feel like oh i've got to get these loops out quick and you're rushing them or whatever to get them out quick you're already fucking up at that point you gotta keep your release schedule like kind of balanced with what you feel comfortable with to make the best loops in a sense so yeah the reason i'm in the doll right now is to show you my export process how i give people the most value for my loops so if you've ever downloaded my kits before, you know it's not just the master, which is up here. You know, I've got these stems, which I use this part for, like separate stems as well, not just at the end. And I, I got the midis and everything, so... I'm not like one of these dudes that kind of like piecemeals and monetize everything. I mean, you could do that, and that works for some people, that's fine too. But ultimately, I want a guy that has purchased my kit to be able to make the best beat possible. That's gonna be the best thing for me. It's not only going to help endear the customer to you, but it's also going to help them make the best beat possible. And maybe you get a placement from that or something like their, their 808 is going to be in key. You know, some of these, some of these drum producers need help, bro. Their 808s are fucking like all over the place. You feel me? Sometimes you just got to help them out a little bit. And yeah, they may not be the best, but shit, if they get you a placement, that's all that matters. Right. But yeah, so. Give them the midis, no out of no out of key eight oh eights. So um yeah, I'm gonna show you what I do here. So this is a loop from my for my upcoming 4PF kit. I'm working on that 4PF kit back on my 4PF shit boys. But uh I mean I'll play it. Why not? I'll play a little bit. Yeah, that wasn't the point but uh what i'm gonna show you is like just 
my process of like exploring basically that's that's pretty much what i'm here for so up here we got the master so the master i have five sections always and then i sometimes add more too this is a 113 so five sections are going to take quite a while this part which would be the second half of the hook first half of the hook this would be kind of the bridge i guess uh second second third of the verse and then the first third so because I, I guess this counts as a verse too i don't know bridge verse whatever um but basically five parts always it helps just keep a smooth rhythm to to uh to whatever beat making process for the other guy on the other end you know if he wants to just use the master he can do that i always recommend i mean if you have the stems use the stems right but some dudes want to use a mask, that's fine. You can be kind of creative, just remove add parts. You can half time, you can use automation, all that. This one's pretty simple, I guess. So um, yeah, at that point, you know, I just export this, go in here, uh, wave. I do, I do do waves. A lot of people are like, oh, you can't tell the difference between a wave and an MP3. I mean, I just feel like I don't want to compromise on the quality. I, I can't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the actual difference is, you feel me? But yeah, I go into whatever the masters is for my thing. You're gonna see like how my loop kits are laid out if you've never seen one before. Um, yeah, so I got the masters, stems and MIDI. So I'd go into masters, save, just export the whole thing. So yeah, that's how I do that. Then as you can see here from the name, this is super, super important. It makes their loops a hundred times better. Name. That's good. The, the placement of all these is pretty important too, because you want you don't want like loops like superseding each other, especially if you're working on a collab pack by like you're labbing with someone. You got your at up here and it's higher. It's like a higher alphabet or whatever. So all your loops are before his. That'd be fucking annoying. So probably the best way to lay it out, in my opinion. Uh, 113 uh, BPM uh, key C sharp minor. Then you got your prod. I would use my at because it helps people contact you. I should just get rid of the prod to be honest. It's kind of redundant, but whatever. Then this is optional, but I, I really like adding it. It's uh, it's just a description of the loop, basically. Helps the user. I do this for my beats too. I kind of have a description of there. Helps. So yeah, that's the master, right? At that point, then you have the stems. So stems, basically, no matter whether everything whether you have sections where not everything plays at the same time, whatever, it doesn't really matter for the stems. You just have everything and two bars. If there's a variation in one of the mixer tracks, because you do split by mixer track, you can add two more, you add them here. Yeah, say I wanted to do this, but then make unique and I don't know, like, like lower the pitch or something. So at that point, I would have it kind of kind of like that. So. The reason I do two two bars minimum, just so like if one of the bars comes out a bit weird or whatever, or if there's like delay which takes it into the next part, they have the option of adding that in. So for example, say there's some delay here or whatever on like some sound, they could just kind of do that and boom, they would have it. Not that there is for that sound, but you kind of get what I'm saying. So yeah, that's, that's, a, that's like the way I add my stems. So when I export here, wave, whatever doesn't matter you get the screen and then you hit split by mixer track and you uh also you use the you right click here and you kind of select like that so you don't get like a whole bunch of blank space at the end so yeah that's how i do my thing also obviously i sell the tracks right click and then you just left click the rest of them and that's how i do that so that's pretty much the export process then midis i'll show you how to save a midi if you don't know pretty simple uh, just go file, export MIDI, or, you know, use this. I don't really use that, but I should, I guess. Export as MIDI, and then I save stems, and I'll, I'll show you how to save stems, actually. So, uh, go back into the kit. Okay, this is the stems in MIDI folder, right? Boom. Stems in MIDI. Uh, so I've got all the loops here, all the same loops as the masters. So these are the stems and MIDIs for every loop. So you open a folder, you get all the stems here, boom. So at that point, you got your all your sounds. So whatever this loop is, I got all the sounds for it. And then the midis are in a separate folder inside the same folder. And then boom, all the midis are in there too. So 
yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. That's the, that's the whole expert process. I'd say like the extra steps from just doing the master probably is just like an extra five minutes, but it's so, so worth it when people get their kits. People always tell me like, I really appreciate you putting the midis in. I really appreciate the stems. I really appreciate the separated stems too. Cause I mean, a lot of people do the, this thing where they do that and that's fine too. That's, that's okay. That's how I used to do things. And that's cool as well. I mean, yeah, like kind of like that, you feel me? And that works too. That's 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 a whole other thing that, that kind of works too. But separating them helps them put them on like separate mixer tracks like straight away. I just think it's a little bit cleaner. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. But yeah, stems, always better than no stems. Definitely. And midis help too. Like some of these dudes don't know what the fuck they're doing without the midi. Anyway, yeah, so you've got that. That's one loop, right? Um, I'm actually getting to the preview. So the previews I put out on YouTube, I put them through my doll first. Yeah, boom. This is a preview I have. It's super, 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 super simple. I mean, a lot of people put a lot into like, like some transitions and stuff. You can do that. That's fine. I don't personally bother because they're losing so much value by like jacking your stuff off YouTube that it doesn't even bother me. Like there's no way some dude's gonna get placed just by taking eight bars of the master, like fuck that. But um, yeah, so what I do is I grab all the loops from the kit. I kind of put them in order of how much I like them. You want to put your best foot forward always. So these are based on my personal preference. I think this kit is hard. It's my absolutely 4 PF kit, so. Yeah, I think this kit is hard. I don't think there's really a bad loop in there, but I went off like my favorites. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's pretty much just that. So you just drag them all in, you have them play one right after another, and you do that the entire thing. Normally with my 10 loop kits, it's around two minutes, just a little over two minutes. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to that part. Uh, one thing I do want to touch on, I guess, is like a lot of people think that once you put out like the loops on YouTube, like you're not really going to get a placement off them just because like A, you're selling them for money and B, like it's not like exclusive anymore. So like a lot of industry producers and stuff don't want it. I mean, I'm just going to tell you right now that's complete like misinformation. That's capped to like the highest degree. You can definitely get placements still up the exact same loops. You know, dudes like Nick Mira, Now Waves. A lot of these dudes get placements and sell kits. So there's no reason you can't do both. Like that's just like a little tangent, but I want to touch on that. Like feel free to do both. I think you should be doing both to maximize, you know, your, I guess your income and your reach, like get people fucking with you as well. So yeah. All right, so I'm gonna really briefly like touch on art. You know, I've already done a whole video on how I do my art, so I'm not gonna go too in depth on it. I'm just gonna say that art matters for kits way more than it does for beats. You know, on beats you can just put like, get an image from wherever and then go to the tube, just upload it like straight. And that's fine. And that definitely works. That's exactly what I do. Um, for kits, people are a little more discerning. Like you have to look a little more professional. So yeah, so I mean, if you haven't seen how I do my art, you know, I'll link it below. In terms of like what kind of art you want, I would say do not ever, ever fucking use that disgusting trash ass fucking shitty goddamn 3D box art. That is, that shit is disgusting, dog. That shit is grimy as hell. Looks ass, looks like unprofessional. I don't know, that shit just looks terrible to me. I, I feel like there's no redeeming that stuff. Like. Point is like they're succeeding despite it, not because of it. That shit is trash. Don't don't be making no 3D art, you feel me? But um what I would say is basically just also learn how to make your own art. You know, I already showed you like my tutorial, my process. Get like some kind of template going so people like see the temp like the thumbnail on YouTube or whatever, and they're like, oh it's this guy uploaded like straight away, like they know your style, they know what you're about. So when they see your art, they're like, ah. Oh, Here's another upload from this guy and it looks good or whatever. Yeah, try to make your own art. That way you don't got to pay someone else to do it. You don't got to wait on someone else to give it to you. Um, you can just do it whenever whenever you feel like it. So yeah, learn how to make your own art basically. Um, yeah, that's part one basically. Like this was just the basics, kind of what you need to be doing before you even put the kit out. 
like what you kind of need to be producing beforehand. So my next upload is going to be, you know, like once it's up, like what do you do? How do you, you know, push it? How do you get people to buy it? How do you kind of have the algorithm working in your favor and all that kind of stuff? So I'm going to be getting into that next week, you know, fuck with loop side, you know, we got beat tutorials, beat breakdowns, melodies. Uh, art, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, kits too, like we put out our own free kits, go check those out. And yeah, man, I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.